Welcome to the Points of View Selections from Wilson Avenue Loft Artists. I am Nancy McTagstock. I am a painter, printmaker, and photographer. I am happy to be a part of this group exhibition of my fellow loft mates here in South Norwalk. Um, for your viewing interest tonight, I have <laughs> two, uh, two of my pieces here. Uh, this particular piece is called In the Twilight. It is a solar etching with monotype. Um, the second piece here is called Jaipur Infusion number two, uh, which is also a solar etching with monotype. Um, I have worked um, most specifically in printmaking through my career with monotype, with solar etching. Uh, I do a lot of work with dry point. Uh, for me, that's an extension of drawing. Um, and I enjoy it very much. I would say that the majority of my work is all um, nature inspired. I grew up on a nature preserve and um, I have lived on two different nature preserves since moving here to Connecticut. And um, all I have to do is walk outside and there's magic. <laughs> And then it's up to me to make something of it. So um, I feel very fortunate to live in Connecticut, which has such a, uh, um, uh, a plethora of um, plant life and um, other types of interesting landscapes. And uh, I am a gardener, a novice gardener, but I do like to get out there and work in the dirt every day. Um, and I would say that um, although I've worked from very hyper-realism uh, to more abstracted pieces, uh, these pieces are kind of fusions of that. Um, I kind of refer to them as abstracted realism. I was working for a time um, really looking at the push and pull with um, micro versus macro within the confines of the landscape. Uh, having worked um, with the macro or the large view of the landscape for a, a good many years, I thought it would be interesting to juxtapose the two. So um, uh, with an interest in botany and in plant, and in plant life and so forth, um, these particular pieces kind of lent themselves to that. As far as the coloration goes, um, in my monotypes, my straight monotypes, I really prefer to work monochromatically. That doesn't necessarily mean black and white, it just means um, tones of one particular color. Uh, these, however, are a bit more colorful, and um, uh, this one, obviously, in the twilight, uh, showcases um, a variety of different types of close-ups of uh, floral life in my garden. And um, I was traveling to India a couple of years ago and the colors are just so incredibly mind-boggling and uh, probably not my particular go-to colors, uh, but um, you can't escape it. I mean, the colors there are just amazing. So I found myself working with colors that I normally don't work with, uh, not because I don't like them, it's just, um, I would say, not colors that I just, I just don't naturally reference, shall we say. Um, so these are the two pieces that are in this show, and I welcome any questions that anybody might have about these or anything else. Can you talk a little bit about your process, the solar etching? Yes, yeah. I can. With these pieces, what I did do was I did work uh, specifically with uh, solar plates. Um, these were developed in Japan probably maybe 25 or 30 years ago now. It's kind of the time is going quickly. And um, it's an aluminum bottom with a photo polymer that's kind of like a gelatinous surface and when you expose um, 
a drawing or a photograph or a, um, an ink wash or whatever it is that you want to expose. Or you can also use just natural uh, substances or unnatural substances for that matter. Um, and then you expose it to the sun to the sunlight. Now you can do that either outside with natural sunlight or in my case I um, was fortunate to have use of a, a solar etching machine uh, for a lack of a better term. It's kind of like a tanning bed for printmakers shall we say. And um, so rather than having your your plate outside pressed praying for the sun to remain the same and consistent, you have a much more consistent result when you're working with the machine, which is why I, I like that. So um, in the case, it, uh, it, it really varies depending upon what you're looking for. In these cases, both of these cases, I created relief plates. So I wanted a much deeper um, cut or a deeper etch uh, in the plate so that it was really a defined, um, two defined levels, so to speak. There are other ways that you can use um, and apply uh, uh, images to create um, pieces that are much more like an aqua tint type of a finish, but this was what I was looking for for these. So in the case of this one, where it's orange, that was the raised surface on the plate and then I inked that up. And um, as you can well imagine, with all of these different types of uh, foliage going every which way, it, I, I did not have in my studio, you know, one of those marvelous like $500 rollers that they have here. So I was using my six inch sprayers and um, had to do a lot of cleanup work with my Q-tips in order to um, really create a clean, orange um, uh, surface and then after that was dry I then went back in with a solid plate that was this size and um, and printed again so it's actually a multiple drop plate we call it uh, so there's more than one plate there to add the pink in the background um, with this group here, there were actually three different plates that were used in the solar etching process. These two plates were the same and were printed inverting in, by inverting them in the two different quadrants. And then these were obviously two other different plates. Um, so that takes a little bit more careful preparation and placement. And then um, afterwards, I uh, created a monotype, if you will, um, background color by using eight by 10 plates uh, in all four quadrants, but these two had the same color and these two had the same color. So from a process standpoint, that's how that all happened. You're overprinting the solid? Yeah. The, you're overprinting. Yes. Is that, is that it's like a glaze. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, it does a little bit. But, you know, you could do it the other way. I mean, you could do the solid first. You could do the, the monotype layer first. And then it, it just yields a different result. So it's what you're really looking for. In, in these cases, I wanted something a little softer rather than something very powerfully graphic with a huge contrast. I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle. I would say most of my work tends to... Um, go more towards subtlety. Um, you know, I like things to be a little bit more calm. So anyway, um, yes? How precise is the exposure timing? Like if you wait another minute, is it totally Oh bad? yeah, it could be really bad. Well, it all depends on the image and it depends on the density of the image. It depends on a lot of different things. And sometimes the plates are just a little funky. You know, and the larger, the larger the plate size that you use, obviously the more expensive it is. And they are quite costly, the solar plates. So you really don't want to make a mistake when you're using a big plate. So you can use some scraps of some um, smaller plates and 
and you know test things out or just use a smaller plate like a four by six and cut it in strips and try out some different exposures if you're not sure yeah yes so is, is this it or is this one of several attempts I'm one of those really bizarre printmakers who um, for the most part I only print one I only do unique prints even um, even with my dry points and um, there are other printmakers who I've worked with over the years who are master printers who have said to me, why do you do this? What, what, I don't understand why you do this. But I guess for me, it's more the personal challenge of just getting the print to be exactly how I want it. And then I feel very comfortable and I can move on to whatever it is that I want to do next. So, so how many pools was the, your print, the blue one on the left? How many pools was that? Um, well, there are, th let's see, one, two, three plates, and then, and then a fourth plate, which was the monotype. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One last question. Yes. Oh, that's my question. Yes. Uh, it's one plate, four images on one plate, or is it shinkolade? No, it's not chinkolade. It this is a it, let's I'll take you through the steps. So for on this one, for example, it's one white sheet of paper. It is three um, solar plates. One, two, and then the third one, which is also replicated again there, inverted. And then so I'm printing one, two, three, four times, even though there's only three plates because of the duplicate of that one plate that's replicated. And then there's um, uh, actually, then I have, um, I think when I printed this, I did two eight by 10 plates at the same time. I think I did. And then I did those also at the same time. I, can, I can't remember, to tell you the truth. But, um, you know, you have, it's one of those ones where you kind of go, hopefully everything will work. <laughs> thank you, Nancy, very much. So thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks.